This is the Nubia Neo 2 5G, a gaming smartphone priced under 10,000 pesos in the Philippines. Is it possible for a smartphone at this price to be truly considered as a gaming smartphone? I'm Daniel of PinoyTechnoGuy.com and let's find out in this video. The Nubia Neo 2 5G comes in a yellow box with gaming-inspired graphics. Along with the phone, you'll get a frosted phone case with open sides for the side-mounted gaming triggers and a 33-watt charger with USB Type-C on both ends of the cable. As you can see, this smartphone is designed for gamers. There's cool mecha graphics at the back with a striking hero eye design. The cameras also look like part of the mecha head with its octagonal eye lens. I have the frost silver color variant, but it also comes in storm gray and sunfire yellow. However, all of these are just graphics. There are no vents nor RGB lighting in the glossy back panel. Hence, it feels like any other normal smartphone when used. There are two shoulder gaming triggers along with its red power button on the right side of the device. These are customizable and can even support different operations for action combos. It takes a bit of time to get used to when it's your first time using gaming triggers on a phone, but they offer distinct advantages in competitive gaming. Now let's talk about the actual gaming performance of the Nubia Neo 2 5G. It's powered by a Unisoc T820 processor with 8GB of physical RAM. I played some popular games and measured the average frame rate. Here's Mobile Legends with ultra graphics quality. The average frame rate is an impressive 58.9 FPS with minimal frame drops during team fights. Call of Duty Mobile defaults to low graphics quality, but you can change it to medium. Here's my gaming test. Its average frame rate is 39.2 FPS only, with more noticeable frame drops during the heat of battle. But it's still enjoyable to play and I even won the match. Finally, we have Genshin Impact, which sets the graphics quality to smooth, the lowest option in the settings. The average frame rate is 27.7 FPS only. It's already low in visual quality, but the experience is still janky. Overall, the Nubia Neo 2 5G can run popular games smoothly to some extent. Games like Call of Duty are limited to low graphics quality, but still enjoyable to play. It strikes a good balance between gaming performance and budget. Thermal management is also good thanks to a multi-layer heat dissipation system. I only experienced significant heating while testing the gaming performance of Genshin Impact. The Nubia Neo 2 5G has a 6.72-inch Full HD display that supports up to 120Hz of screen refresh rate. It's a decent screen in terms of sharpness and the bezels are narrow on all sides except the chin. However, colors are not as vibrant as I'd like. Brightness is enough for indoor use but looks dim outdoors under bright sunlight. Here's how it looks like when watching videos on YouTube or shows on Netflix. There's no HDR support either. On the plus side, the device has stereo speakers that are useful when playing games although the sound quality isn't impressive. It does have DTS X Ultra when listening via earphones. Another area where the Nubia Neo 2 5G shows its gaming DNA is in its software. It has a mecha-inspired theme including including system icons, wallpapers, and sounds. It has a game space app where you can customize the performance of games, accidental touch protection, screen recording options, and more. While playing games, more gaming features are accessible from a flyout menu, including the customizations for the shoulder triggers. There are also several cool themes in the personalization menu. I like the future tech and hyper-futurism themes. 
At the back of the phone are two cameras, a 50 megapixel main camera and 2 megapixel depth sensor. It can capture decent pictures in well-lit scenes as well as at night when using the dedicated night mode. However, it's prone to blurring due to camera shake, especially in low-light scenes. It can shoot videos at 1080p resolution. Video quality is decent too, but once again, it's prone to shakes when shooting handheld. On the front side, there is a 16 megapixel selfie camera with good sharpness but a bit muted colors. Its red accent power button serves as a fingerprint scanner and it's quite fast and reliable. Connectivity options include dual band Wi Fi and dual SIM 5G connectivity. Mobile data is fast in areas with 5G signals and signal reception is good. There's also an app called Gopher which handles paired accessories like earphones, gamepads, and cooling pads. To complete the Nubia Neo 2 5G's game experience, there's a massive 6000 mAh battery that lasts more than a day on a single charge with my casual use. When playing games continuously at 50% screen brightness, the battery drains in about 6 to 7 hours. Recharging is quite fast thanks to the 33 watt charger included in the box. It takes 1 hour and 22 minutes to fully charge from 0 to 100% battery capacity. In conclusion, the Nubia Neo 2 5G is a great choice as a gaming smartphone for those who are on a tight budget. For less than 10K, it comes with decent gaming performance and a lot of useful gaming features and cool gaming inspired aesthetics. Of course, there are sacrifices with that price tag. It doesn't have enough power for running very heavy games like Genshin Impact and it's limited to low graphics quality in games like Call of Duty. Nevertheless, you'll have plenty of power for Mobile Legends, Honor of Kings, and other similar games. The screen, battery life, 50 megapixel rear camera, and connectivity features are good, although its selfie camera is a, a bit disappointing. I still recommend this phone to all budget gamers out there. So that's my review of the Nubia Neo 2 5G. Let me know your thoughts about this device in the comments and see you in the next video.